Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Ren. I got a video today from Passport OG. You know, Passport Pops did a great video on Facebook lists. This list that women don't want to t- want men to take them out on dates or first dates or they don't want to go to is ridiculous. And things are just getting more ridiculous. Women just are making themselves even more alienated against men. They just want to fight against men constantly, making stupid shit like this. Because men aren't the ones doing these things. So... Please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And let's get to that chow. It's chow time. Like I said, men aren't like starting this, but we'll, we'll sure finish it. We'll make our own stupid lists like this too. You know, I think there was the list that was made who not to date. And the first one on that list was single mothers. <laughs> who made this list? Is this just going viral? Is it like on Reddit or something? Women okay, weighed okay. in. Okay, so women weighed in. Okay, so it includes, you know, Cheesecake Factor, all those. Any fast food chain... I don't even get it, guys. Let's go back a little bit. Like, when I was a young kid going out on dates, a lot of these places were it. Like, IHOP, maybe not Denny's. We had Norm's here, so we go to Norm's. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, not bad. Wingstop was huge when I was growing up. That was like the fir- like it first came out when I was growing up, when I was uh, like 18, 19. So it was a big deal. Like, what was it like? Any uh, fast food bowling chain or something? Like, I, I so someone comes I out love with a bowling. date rest- I, I literally took my my ex wife on our first date was bowling, and <laughs> so. But I can understand why women don't want to go bowling because they got raptor claws now, and you know they probably don't like putting their fingers in holes as much as I do. So restaurant list of pretty much all of the things that we did as dates as young Gen Xers and basically said that they're not acceptable anymore. Yeah, what- yeah I don't even know if I'm a Gen Xer. I'm a millennial. I don't even know what, what, what age range. They, they, they change it up all the time. I'm 30 fucking seven now. So, but a lot of these places, he's right. When I was growing up, they were huge. Like dinner and movies. I took a lot of women in dinner and movies before I got married. You know, like there wasn't no Netflix and like hulu wasn't that big yet when i was growing up uh like fucking again bowling i love bowling i still bowl now i've bowled since i was like six or seven so that was probably one of like the least asian things i do is bowling which <laughs> pretty much lets me know that whoever made the list was probably an elder gen x person I, I, that I think said so. i think there's a, something behind the creation of the list and the reason why is getting so much attention But first, we have to understand the different ways that men and women process heartbreak. Because men process heartbreak like this. Getting your heart broke is like, I don't know, it's like men cannot graduate till a woman breaks your heart. Shout out to the late, great Richard Pryor. He's right. I I actually almost 100% agree with this. Like, like almost cold. You know what? I cold heartedly agree with this 100% that men have not graduated until they've, they've gotten destroyed by a woman. Like when men are, are off so willy nilly, happy go lucky until a woman comes and smacks them back down to reality. And I think men that don't get that privilege have a very hard time and the men that do go through that heartache get to build themselves back up for men love is swift is fierce and it's merciless you can be a relationship with a woman and she can let you know that she doesn't want to take it to the next level because you're not the guy or you could be in an unrequited love and one day she can just say you're bothering me please leave me alone Mm -hmm. and guys understand the only thing you can do is pick yourself up brush yourself off and try and keep it moving but for women i think that this list shows that they're going through a different kind of heartbreak If I were a betting man, I would put money on the fact that the woman who made this list watched Living Single. Living Single told women that they were... I watched this like like a few times, but I didn't enjoy it so much. I didn't like the comedy in this particular show. We're going to have exciting single dating lives in the perpetuity. And while they live these exciting dating lives, they are fulfilled by their accomplishments at work. That there will be a never-ending stream of high accomplished, extremely attractive men pursuing them as the case was on the television show. Reality, however, 
is I guess it's like the black African American version of Sex in the City. Then I guess painting a different picture. It's just it's just unfortunate, and to me, especially after thirty, uh, you know, it, it, women think that it's like a doomsday when I say these things, but I, it's not completely over. But mm -hmm. for the most part, like if you're not gonna, if if these women don't have the urgency to get what they supposedly say they want then yeah, it is over. For me, I think the biggest tragedy is that there's a media complex around women in developed countries. And you'll see this if you go to other developed countries that basically tells them things that make them feel good. Yes. And it doesn't tell them the hard decisions that they have to make in order to live a fulfilling second half of their lives. And often the message that sounds like this is avoided. You're not gonna, if, if these women don't have the urgency to get what they supposedly say they want, then yeah, it is over if you don't have the urgency to make the changes, because you don't. Have That's where I was waiting for, the urgency to make the changes, to conform to a man's life, to conform to the men that they want's lives. That's what I think is more important. At times, it's not on your side. It is, just, exactly. it is what it is. And then the these guys you making this real yeah. about that, the better. I, I take it yes. from me. Any women listening, the sooner you get realistic about what he just said, the better off you'll be. The mm -hmm. more realistic the dating scene will become for you. Because I guarantee you, wherever you're doing it now, you're not looking at it realistically. And you'd be doing yourself more of a service if you go ahead and just accept the fact that, hey, I'm over 30. This is what it looks like. This is what I can offer. This is what I should expect. Correct. This is a conversation between Tell Toya and the Equalizer, and it's basically the kind of conversation that you would have with your little sister if you cared about her and you wanted her to get married. Yep. And this is a conversation that's absent from popular media. I'm going to come back to this stream, but I'm going to show you the kind of media that a lot of women are consuming, and it's just compounding misery. It's time to speak it into existence. It's time to stop doubting it. Stop being afraid of it because you tried before and it failed and you tried before that and it failed. And now you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket or get excited or be positive about it in case it fails again. Speak it into existence. Imagine as a man, you're looking up at a woman's apartment that you love and you keep saying over and over into the night sky, I'm going to do whatever it takes till I can get her. I'm going to do whatever it takes till I can get her. That would essentially make you a stalker. And men understand, That's especially true. in love, you can't speak it into existence. But this kind of messaging is so attractive because it doesn't say you need to work 18 hour days for a decade. It doesn't say you need to sacrifice your personal life to make your business pop. It doesn't say that. It just Remember, men, what he is saying is what we have to do. We have to sacrifice, put in those 18 hour days, do those improvements on ourselves. It's necessary. It's necessary for everyone. Like it doesn't matter how successful you are. You need to work on your body. Like health is wealth. Like I, as I've gotten older, 37, like last month, or was it this month? October still, right? This month. So it's like, what? I'm 37 for a couple of weeks now and yeah, health is a big deal. I've gained a little bit of weight because I was sick for like two weeks and I didn't really go to the gym. So I actually like gained like 10 pounds. Fucking fat ass over here. I need to lose that weight. <clears throat> but I'm trying to get back into the gym. Like my face looks a little bit more like, you know, chubby. And like, I don't like it. So you better get back to work. It says, do this thing that feels really good and it's going to make you feel good for a little while and it's going to take your concentration on your immediate troubles away. And this is where we get into a problem because the list really shows that people are trying to speak this idea into existence and some of it shows how ridiculous the list actually is. Yep. Other places mentioned include movies, the gym, a bar for drinks, coffee or ice cream dates and sporting events. Pretty much <laughs> these women. I've never been a Chipotle myself. I've heard good things and bad things. No care for it. Listed everything there is to do. And actually, um, I, I, I listened to the list. Uh, I was shocked this was actually on here. Um, one of the things on that list was uh, don't even take me to church. I was like, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> I couldn't, I, just, believe that made it, I couldn't believe that made it on there, but like, 
This is AB Media noting that putting church on the list is extremely peculiar. And to me, it's a dead giveaway that it's a disgruntled Gen Xer that was in on or was solely responsible for making this list. And in my opinion, the list itself is again, speaking it into existence. If I say that I don't wanna to go to these places, then I'm going to find some guy like the guys that swooped in on Living Single that are gonna take me to the places that I really wanna to go to. Mm. How much does it cost to go on a date in the Philippines? We started off our night grabbing drinks and food at a dive bar. The drinks were- it Looks pretty fancy. It looks like a fancy drink. It looks like a, some kind of coconut drink right here. Then he got some nachos. Great, and the loaded nachos and mixed platter we had were very tasty. Afterwards, we ended up heading to the hookah lounge to smoke, chill out, vibe out, and then we finished- I'm not a big fan of hookah lounges. It's not that fun to me up our night with a very delicious chocolate shake the average date in the u.s costs around 98 dollars we ended the night 98 bucks really damn that's actually pretty high if that's the average that means a lot of men are paying a lot more than that and then there's a lot of men paying a lot less than that too so but the average is 98 holy shit that's pretty high i thought it would be like 50 bucks or something spending 2838 pesos or $50.14. <laughs> Not bad bucks. if you're an expat. So I mean, they had a really good time. They had quite a bit of different meals. They went to you know, like hookah bar and everything too for 50 bucks. It's not bad. Oh, I guess like for a date night, I get what you're saying. It's not just dinner. It's usually dinner and something else. And I guess I can understand. If you're thinking of moving to the Philippines, you might be wondering. For more and more guys that are starting to open their eyes to looking around the world for dating options, this is the competition. Yeah. Not only is it the kind of date that you would get at a TGI Fridays, but the date is relatively economical, pretty much half the price of what you would pay in the States. And so when this one guy who would have spent $100 in the States spends $50 somewhere else and the woman is clearly enjoying the date, that has ramifications. That's win, win, win vacations or better should i say the dating game in the states is getting cutthroat yeah. on a date i'm not spending a whole lot of money on a date where i'm getting to know you now if we're established in a restaurant i mean in a relationship yes i will take you to places because we are officially together 100 percent agree but right. we're uh when you're dating you're interviewing each other to see if you're compatible. This is Lewis, and he's explaining what's pretty rational in what we saw in the video from the Philippines. If you're in a relationship with somebody, sure, you go on dates. But then he explains the other side of it, and this is where I think is the underlying reason why someone will put out a list like that and try to quote-unquote speak it into existence. Going to Olive Garden or Ruth Chris ain't gonna make no difference if the if the chemistry works or not. This is correct. And, and it proves my point. There's no more, the relationships are done in America. And it's like, okay, if they want people to take them to Ruth's Cricks and like Mastro's and stuff, like bitch, I've only been to Ruth Chris like once. I've only been to Mastro like once myself. I go to a lot of fancy restaurants. I go out to eat a lot, but I don't go to these places like on a consistent basis i usually try the place once and i try another place like these places are just so high end like i've never spent less than 150 bucks by myself at any of these places so imagine two people that's 300 bucks that's and i don't even get drinks i just get water i only drink water majority of the time i don't drink soda and i'm not much of an alcohol drinker so i just get water and it's still going to be about 150 bucks so if she gets a drink appetizers and all that shit that's 300 400 dollars at these high-end places for our first date i don't even fucking know you like i don't fucking know you everything is transactional i hope everybody gets they they minds like over that like look this is a hoe and trick culture now mm -hmm. when we come from a dysfunctional culture that's ass backwards and it's not going to change. It, this is a strictly transactional society now. I got my $75. What's up? <laughs> I 
I no. got nothing. I got nothing. God damn, is that cheap out there? Uh, I, 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 I got I got seventy five dollars. I got a box from the chicken shack with some greasy fries and a no name soda. What's up? <laughs> if you grew up watching Living Single and you were faced with a reality like this, I'm a manager at a supermarket. I'm st most of my shoplifters are single mothers. Wow. Because inflation is so bad and they've been cutting benefits. You might try something like putting out a list like this to quote unquote, speak it into existence. The men that you saw on Living Single coming in and making Khadija and everyone else's lives so exciting by trying to romance them while they're living in a commune of single women, that was a dream on the television show. But the media around a lot of women have told them a dream, or should I say a lie, that now many of them are facing especially with a growing market of guys who are considering dating overseas and women overseas that are appreciating going to places like the Cheesecake Factory or even Applebee's. If you were in that I environment, like you might try and speak it into existence too. Shout outs to Passport Pops, Passport OG, always doing fucking bangers. I learned so much from him. Like, He's one of those elders that just has so much experience and the way he moves about things. It's, it's so great to learn from him. At least I hope a lot of people on my channel pick up some things from him. Like I pick up quite a bit of things from him and the whole living color, living single show. I didn't watch it that much. So I hope, I mean, hopefully that helps connect with some of you guys that, uh, watch that show a lot. I didn't watch that show a lot. I watch a lot of Martin. Um, which was around the same time, but hey, it's this list. Like, I feel like just women just want to separate themselves more and more from men. And he's right. They just want to manifest fancy dinners and all these things. So they're going to make a list to, you know, just take out all the shitty things. They don't want to go anyways. So please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And let's get that show. Oops. Like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.